Huge homes popping up across the island are raising eyebrows. Now the mayor is asking his administration to take action as the trend continues to spread. Always Investigating first started looking into the issue earlier this year and showed how developers were fitting these giant structures into properties meant for single families. Neighbors complained they violated the intent of zoning rules, but it has not been easy to prove. Gina Mangieri continues her investigation and learns what's changing. Gina? Joe, complaints are mounting, but I found inspections and violation notices dropping. So I asked the mayor what his administration is doing about the concerns, and he tells me these homes may be the result of a need for more affordable housing, but that he still wants limits. They stand out in quaint residential neighborhoods, giant homes with eight, nine, ten, even 28 bedrooms in single family or at best two family zoned parts of Oahu. Right down here, right down the street, on Hala Drive. What did you think when you saw that? Uh, I thought, how could they get so close to the boundaries? That house may be a few blocks away from his cottage, but I'm the first to tell him there's a three-story, 15-bedroom giant about to sprout right next door. It's one of several on a list of upcoming projects I got of city building department permit applications. The new neighbors, whose permit is in the review phase as a single-family home, had not told him or any others I met that this big of a house was on the drawing board. Pretty much they were just going to fix the house. At first? At first. When you see 15 bedrooms, what do you worry about? Uh, parking and um, noise, probably noise. We run into the new owners on site. How many bedrooms are here now? Right now? Yes. Right now, um, five. Five bedrooms? So. This plan would make it three times the size, 15 bedrooms. Why, why such a big home here? By me, me. Will it be all your family living yeah. here? How many people total will live here? Um, we have like, um, like, um, we have the seven, nine, and then even my sister-in-law, my sister-in-law, like. He had big family. It's zoned residential for single family. We've uncovered other big houses used for everything from a rent a room complex to pricey vacation rentals. Will you be renting any of it to uh, to tenants? No. Will you be renting any of it to visitors or tourists? Visitor like like if no no rent. Um, if my friends coming to from China, so we let them leave. Okay. The Department of Planning and Permitting tells me owners of places like this are now being asked to sign deed restrictions to be recorded with the Bureau of Conveyances, promising to abide by the occupancy rules of family only. Do I have to sign? That's what they're telling us. Have you heard about that yet? No. Would you sign if they tell you that it becomes a requirement? Mm. I, I, I don't know. There were more surprises in store for neighbors on my upcoming structures list. Folks to either side of this cleared lot in Kalihi Valley did not know the city has approved issuance of a permit for an 18-bedroom house. They say they'd been told 10 and that it might be a care home. The owners tell me they'll keep it as a single-family home unless or until they get a care home license. Right now, there's no limit, and DPP sticks neutrally to abiding code saying we cannot prohibit a building permit for a large house on the assumption that it will be illegally occupied. If these homes are in compliance, then we need to really change the, uh, the rules. Council member Trevor Ozawa introduced the first of several measures asking DPP how they'd recommend redefining code to meet the spirit of zoning. DPP did not offer suggestions, so he put in another measure, suggesting limits on the number of bedrooms, bathrooms, even sinks and wet bars. An Ann Kobayashi bill would tax them higher. A Carol Fukunaga bill would put a moratorium on them. How quickly can this happen, though, because there are dozens of them have already been built. Dozens more are in the works, and who, men, who knows how many are being designed and applied for right now? Well, I think that we're going to come to a halt very soon. Until we get a, a wrangle on this situation, we're not going to let people just uh, race to the finish line. Yet nearly two dozen with 8 to 18 bedrooms are on that new permit list I went door-to-door -door with 
Dozens more popped up before that. Complaints are soaring. What are you hearing from constituents? People are sick and tired of these huge houses coming up right next door to them and really disrupting their, you know, lives. The city gave me a list of 20 big house complaints they followed up on this year. Fewer than half of them resulting in a notice of violation. They tell me occupancy violations continue to be a challenge for DPP to enforce, as difficulties exist in identifying relationships within family members. Also, we cannot cite before a violation is committed. The number of violations issued is dropping. Uh, we know that the fines are often settled for 10 cents on the dollar. What's wrong here? Well, I think with regard to these huge houses, these monster homes, we got to go ahead and enforce strict and quickly. What I'd like to see is some more teeth. You know, if you're going to build these monster homes, come before the city council, tell us straight to the face. After I asked the mayor for his take, he told me he shares the community concerns and is taking action. He's asked DPP to draft new rules on size and require more off-street parking. Also asking DPP to double-check these big homes for building code and zoning code violations. We'll follow up on any issues they find and also the council proposals to make changes. Gina Mangieri, KHON2 News.